Hey, oh fellow Dragonborn, Kato Genesis here with a guide to alternative armors. All 15 of the Creation Club alternative armor sets were added with Anniversary Edition, most of which being designs from the Elder Scrolls Blades. Awesome as these new armor sets may be, there's very little consistency in the alternative armors except that each of them has a quest and there is a story related to the Crimson Dirk Bandits that ties them all nicely together. As for the particulars though, sometimes the armor from the quest is enchanted, some of the armor includes includes only two to three pieces, some of it can be crafted with proper smithing perks alone, and some require quests to be complete as well as smithing perks to be crafted. Long story short, the game made this process a bit of a chore for me, so I hope I can make it quick and easy for you. In this no-nonsense guide, I'll be showing you where to find these armor sets, what they do, and maybe some extra tips along the way. So let's get fancy, shall we? First up is one of the two that you can craft by default, and that would be the Alternative Iron Armor, also known as the Iron Plate Armor. This heavy set takes the same materials to make as the standard iron armor, materials being leather strips and iron ingots. However, its base armor value is a couple of points higher. So aside from looking pretty awesome and well protected, you may get eight points more of an armor bonus from the Iron Plate Armor over the standard iron armor. But this is just in the case if you want to craft it yourself. There's also the Enchanted variant that you can get after completing the quest Brothers in Irons. To get this quest, you must go to the Nightgate Inn west of Windhelm. This is the inn kind of out by itself in the snow. Go inside to the Nightgate Inn and walk up to the front counter, and there should be a note on the right side labeled Nightgate Inn Patron's Note. After reading it, you should begin the quest Brothers in Irons. So you find out from the Nightgate Inn that you need to head to the far northwest near Northwatch Keep, otherwise known as the place that Thalmor keep their prisoners of war. Just west of Northwatch Keep will be a little campsite where a few Thalmor will be standing over a dead body. The Thalmor are naturally hostile versus you. They probably just don't want to share their clam chowder. So take care of them and move over to the body they were standing over and you'll see that this is the body of Pale Eyes, containing both his journal as well as an enchanted set of iron plate armor. Armor. So going down the line for enchantments that this comes with, plus 17 heavy armor skill on the iron plate armor suit, plus 35 carry capacity on the boots, plus 25% one-handed attack damage on the gauntlets, and plus 25% damage blocked with shield on the helmet. So even though crafting iron plate is available by default, these are some quite powerful enchantments to get early on and definitely worth it. The entry level light armor set has something like that too. Next alternative armor to check out is the Leather Variant, or the Leather Scout Light Armor. Again, this can be crafted from the start at Riverwood, with no smithing perk requirements, but of course requiring the leather and leather strips, materials-wise. And just like Iron Plate, you get a tiny bonus by crafting yourself Leather Scout over basic leather, but not enough to make a huge difference. The base armor of the original chest piece is 26, the Leather Scout armor chest piece is 27. Now that we've got the basics down, let's get the enchanted variant of the Leather Scout armor. This one was actually surprisingly out of the way compared to all the other ones, and the quest can be started all the way out in Cliffside Retreat, which is south of Dragon Bridge in the Reach. This is a small hunter's shack with not much opposition, yet, but here you'll find two things atop the barrel to read. A guard's dossier on El Heil, I think I said that right, and Zarya's note. After reading said note, which Zarya wrote, this should start the quest double-edged, which does come with an optional objective to disrupt Zarya's plan or go directly to Lost Echo Cave. You get the armor with either choice, the optional just determines who you're going to fight once you reach Lost Echo Cave. Speaking of, the quest then takes you to Lost Echo Cave, which is southeast of Northwatch Tower or West of Solitude. Once you reach the larger cavern of Lost Echo Cave with the Brazier, Zarya, fully clad in the enchanted Leather Scout armor, will be ready to fight you melee if you did the optional objective. But if you didn't do the optional objective, Elhail, a mage, will be standing over Zarya's body and you'll have to fight him instead. This one's a bit weird because it seems like you do get more for not doing the optional objective. The more being Elhail's journal on top of the armor itself. Speaking of, let's get into the enchantments on said Leather Scout armor. The body armor gives a plus 17 to the light armor skill, the boots, plus 40 to stamina, gauntlets, plus 25% pickpocket chance, and the helmet grants a plus 25% to bow damage. A gnarly bonus if you're starting out as a stealth archer or might accidentally later. 
Next up is the Steel Soldier Heavy Armor. This is craftable at the forge once you unlock steel smithing. And just like your regular steel armor, requires leather strips, steel ingots, and iron ingots to make, with the tiny armor increase that the alternative armors get. If you don't feel like spending perk points on the very first of these smithing perks, don't worry, there is a set of steel soldier armor that you can get from the quest itself too, and it is enchanted. To begin the quest for your enchanted steel soldier armor, you'll need to go to Dragon Bridge, a small village west of Solitude with an ever so appropriate bridge with a dragon on it. Head inside the Four Shields Inn, and the note you're looking for in here is also on the right side of the counter near the innkeeper. The note is called Suicide at Dragon Bridge, which hints at both a missing person and now a missing guard. Somebody by the name of Aldepius comes up in this note as well as a following note you find on the guard's corpse downriver. So once you return to the Four Shields Inn, there will be a note left for you on the table straight ahead. It is here you learn Aldepius' real name and are directed to the Bridge of Dragon Bridge to confront him. He draws his weapon as soon as you approach and upon his defeat, you can then loot the enchanted Steel Soldier Armor off of his corpse. Now we get into the enchantments. The Steel Soldier Armor suit grants an increased magic resistance of 15%, the boots have plus 20% stamina regeneration, the gauntlets plus 25 damage blocked with shield, and the helmet has plus 40% fire resistance. Since they're close to the same level, once you have the steel soldier and the iron plate armor, you can mix and match heavy armor pieces for the enchantments that you want. We're on to the first of the light armors that actually requires a quest to be completed to be crafted, but you do still get a set from the quest itself too. That is the three pieces of unenchanted Elven Hunter light armor. That's the armor suit, boots, and gauntlets. When you do get to the point of crafting it, you will need to have Elven Smithing unlocked as well as the quest once a hunter completed. Materials required being leather strips, leather, refined moonstone, and iron ingots. So now let's get to the quest. We're heading to Falkreath for this one, and the note we're looking for this time is in the form of a guard's dossier labeled Ace Rail, which you can find in the Falkreath guard's barracks on the eastern edge of town. After reading the dossier, once a hunter begins and you get one objective, kill Ace Rail. Ace Rail's camp is basically on the other side of Falkreath Forest, a bit north of Hunter's Rest. And once his camp comes into view, he will start attacking you immediately alongside his wolf, Dusk, who is just a wolf. Take out Ace Rail and you can search his body for both some context in the form of his journal, as well as a key. A key that opens the wooden chest at his camp, containing some generic items, but also including the Crimson Dirks Volume 7 and the Elven Hunter Gauntlets, Boots, and Suit of Armor. This turns out to be a nice leather elven hybrid but like i said before is unenchanted but that means you can enchant it with whatever you see fit if you were bummed out that vanilla skyrim didn't have a light armor variant of the dwarven armor well now there is this is the dwarven mail a light four-piece set of dwarven armor it still looks kind of heavy to me but this is a fantasy game and style is an important stat the dwarven mail is craftable after you unlock dwarven smithing and finish the quest fan favorite and requires leather strips dwarven metal ingots iron ingots and steel ingots to create but there is the full set you get from the quest so let's go over that this one in particular is one of the quests that's easier to walk past because it's not in any of the main villages or cities, but outside. So to find the Arena Fans note, which will start us on the quest, is actually going to Iverstead, where you start for climbing the 7,000 steps to visit the Greybeards. But instead of climbing said steps again, we would go southeast. And just past the hilltop, southeast of Iverstead, is a little campsite which should have a dead body, and rummaging through this body's pockets will reveal the Arena Fans note. Turns out this is an adoring fan who who didn't survive their encounter with their favorite champion. You'll learn that the orc champion in question is at the ruins of Bethalft, south of the location you find the unfortunate fan. As soon as you're in range of Bethalft, you'll also be in range of Urgnok's attention, apparently, because if he's aware of your presence, he will come out swinging with the rest of his bandit crew. Defeat Urgnok and you can loot a full set of unenchanted dwarven mail off of his corpse, and you'll be able to craft it yourself, just in case you get better enchanting. Even though Dwarven Mail was introduced and there's already a heavy variant of Dwarven Armor, there is another variant of heavy stuff called the Dwarven Plate, but it does only come in two pieces, an unenchanted suit of armor and some boots. Now the Dwarven Plate Armor is craftable if you unlock Dwarven Smithing, no quest required, and just like the Dwarven Mail, takes leather strips, Dwarven Metal, Iron, and Steel ingots to make. 
However, we're going to go over the quest anyway, just in case you don't feel like unlocking Dwarven Smithing yourself. And you know I want to be consistent here. So the location of this note that we're going to need is going to be in Markarth in the Silver Blood Inn. And the looter's note is on the back left corner of the innkeeper's countertop this time. Finishing reading the looter's note starts the quest Mightier Than the Sword, inviting you to search the tower in Reachwind Eerie, a well-preserved Dwarven ruin that is not far from Dushnik Yal. You'll notice that looters have taken up residence here once you arrive, but they're no worse than your standard bandits. Inside the tower and upstairs after taking care of the final looter, there will be a corpse of a dark elf in here named Cassival, with a note in front of him for more context, as well as the two pieces of dwarven plate armor on the floor to his right. With that, you'll have two alternative pieces of dwarven heavy armor to wear along with your other dwarven armor if you would like. Everybody likes options. Now we're on to armor that's just brand new, and that is the Silver Heavy Armor Set. This falls under the same tier as advanced armors like Steel Plate. After unlocking advanced armors, the silver armor is actually found in the miscellaneous section and expectantly requires silver ingots to craft as well as iron ingots and leather strips. Since this is a brand new type of armor, I will share some of the defense stats too, which sit comfortably in between Nordic carved armor and steel plate. Steel plate chest piece has 40, silver armor has 42, Nordic carved has 43. So, like I said, a comfortable midpoint. But this is only if you're smithing it yourself. If you just rather not bother with crafting it yourself, especially gathering up that silver for it, that's where the quest for the silver armor can help. We go where a lot of quests begin, and that is White Run. After entering, head straight ahead into the Bannered Mare Inn, and in the kitchen, which is off to the left, on the back table in here will be Emshara's Diary. After reading, When the Cat's Away will start. That's cute. The quest then points you to the Dragon's Reach dungeon. So once you hit Dragon's Reach, just take a right and round back, and then you'll be in the dungeon. To the right are chests of confiscated goods, but right between them will be Emshara's Confession. The note contains Emshara's key and instructions as to where the silver armor is stored. And that would be Lund's Hut out to the west and northwest of Rorikstead. After getting inside of Lund's Hut, the one with all the skeevers about, opening the chest at the foot of Lund's bed will reveal the full four-piece set of the silver heavy armor. It's not over just yet though, because once you step outside Lund's Hut, an Imperial Captain and two East Empire Guards will attack you. Finish off them and you'll finally be able to walk away with your silver heavy armor. Now we're moving into the alternative orcish armors, starting with the orcish scale armor. There are four pieces in this light armor set. Even though, like all the others, there is a quest to get this set of armor, orcish smithing is also all that's needed here to get a set of your own. And it requires leather strips, or calcum ingots, as well as corundum instead of iron ingots to make. So now that the crafting part out of the way, let's go over the quest. The note you're looking for for this one is in Mistvale Keep in Riften, more specifically in the Mistvale Keep Guards Barracks. That's the door on the left of the main entrance. If you go upstairs in the Guards Barracks and look for the bunk that's a little more private than the rest, on top of the dresser in there will be the Guards Dossier for Antonius. After reading, the quest Gambler's Edge begins, and it takes you up north, through the rift, and into the edge of Eastmarch, to a location called Crags Lane Cavern. Once you arrive in Crags Lane Cavern and take care of any opposition you encounter, you'll be guided to Antonius's corpse with another note, and find out that an armor collector in Riften has the armor that you seek. You do have a few options on how to deal with her, like convincing her to walk out of town so you can take her out quietly, or just paying for the armor set outright for a thousand gold. There's also the option of just pickpocketing the armor. After you make your choice and acquire the orcish scaled armor, the quest completes and you have your orcish scaled armor. Next up, we go over the Orcish Plate Armor, which like vanilla is another heavy set of Orcish armor with that mild bonus that the alternative armors get. And to make it available, you only need the Orcish Smithing perk and the materials to make it. So leather strips, orichalcum ingots, and iron ingots. But this is one of the sets that does come with enchantments if you do complete the quest. So let's get into that. If you've gone from Embershard Mine to Riverwood to Whiterun, you've probably gone to all the places you need to to get this orcish plate armor, but we'll need the infamous note first. So just as you enter Whiterun, on your left will be the guard's barracks, and straight ahead on the shelves will be the guard's dossier for Yaktu Gra Orkolg. Read that, and Smith and Slash begins as soon as you close the book. Your quest ends up being to find the orc smith in Embershard Mine. Many of you have been here before, so you'll know to expect bandits, but there will also be additional enemies wearing orcish armor. 
crafted for them by this smith. So basically you'll be able to pick up more orcish plate that's not enchanted if you want it. After reaching the main chamber of Ember Shard Mine, you'll find Yaktu Grat Orkog, along with a particularly well-equipped bandit, one that is equipped with the armor that you're looking for. After you take them and the rest of the bandits out, you'll be able to get a key off of the blacksmith's corpse, which leads to a chest that contains materials for smithing. Like I said, the armor itself would be on the bandit that was outfitted particularly well. So you'll have both the armor or multiple sets of the orcish plate armor, as well as upgrade materials in case you feel like upgrading then and there. This four piece set of orcish plate armor off of the blacksmith's champion is fully enchanted. So let's go over those. The armor's enchantment is plus 25% block damage with shields, plus 35 carry capacity on the boots, plus 25% weapon and armor improvement on the gauntlets and plus 17 heavy armor skill on the helmet. This is one of the very few pieces of gear that will offer a bonus to weapon and armor improvement. So it's good to keep these gauntlets handy whenever you do want to improve your gear. Next up is the alternative to ebony armor, the ebony plate heavy armor that is enchanted if you complete the quest. And it comes in four pieces. If you're going the crafting route, you will need the ebony smithing perk as expected, but also need to complete Heart of Crimson, the quest that accompanies the armor. Before we get into the quest, I did want to make a side note that there is no light variant of ebony armor. This is just another heavy variant that's slightly better defenses wise than the ebony armor by like single points per piece. With that, let's get to the quest. This one has a level prerequisite, and once you hit level 32, you should be approached by a courier and given a letter from Tyra Bloodfire, the leader of the Crimson Dirks. After reading, it starts the quest Heart of Crimson, where you must go to Windhelm and give gold to a beggar. And afterwards, the quest points you to the Shrine of Talos that's just to the west of Windhelm, where you're meant to meet up with Tyra. When you approach the Shrine of Talos, she will attack immediately, and when defeated, all of the armor you're looking for will be on her person, as well as a personalized note just for you. Some details changing depending on how nice you were to the beggar. But since we're here mainly for the gear rather than exposition about the Crimson Dirks, let's get into the cool enchantments these four pieces of ebony plate have. The armor has a plus 50 health bonus, the boots plus 30 stamina regen, the gauntlets plus 30% one-handed attack damage, and the helmet gives plus 20 to the heavy armor skill. So this gear appears to have an emphasis on sword and board or dual wielding. Rest in peace, Tyra. Next is a bit unexpected, but not unwelcome, the Daedric Mail, a light variant of Daedric Armor. There is a bit of weirdness with this one. The set comes in three light, one heavy. So I don't know what that does in the terms of matching set stuff. But what I do know is Daedric Mail is kind of on par with the light to heavy between Dragon and Daedric, being a few armor points stronger than Dragon Scale. Once the associated quest is complete, you can craft your Daedric Mail with leather strips, ebony ingots, and Daedra hearts, provided you have Daedric Smithing, that is. And while the set you get is not enchanted, there is a ring that goes along with this quest that is definitely worth your time. So let's do the quest. So this one starts a bit weird. Go to an innkeeper and ask about rumors. After you do that, there should be a second dialogue choice that comes up saying, I'm in need of work. Do you have anything for me? If you ask that, then the innkeeper should hand you a note and start the quest Missing Merchant. Reading the note will then guide you towards Trader's Post, which is east of Windhelm past the farms. Part of the bandit crew includes two named individuals, Erwan and Gunther. While Erwan has more context on why Gunther is here now, Gunther's body contains the Ring of Masser and the Crimson Dirks Volume 5. You might also notice that the ring is not double but triple enchanted, reducing illusion spell cost by 30%, increasing stamina by 20 points, and improving sneak by 20%, a ring nearly everyone can benefit from in some way. After picking up the ring and the notes, you then have the option of using the ring to trade for the Daedric Mail. You can trade the Ring of Masser for the armor, or you can pay 5,000 gold outright for the armor so you can keep the ring as well. And gold is easy enough to get and the ring is irreplaceable. So the best outcome for this is walking away with a triple enchanted ring and some pretty sweet Daedric light armor. 
This next one, Daedric Plate, is in a similar situation to the Dwarven Plate armor, only having two pieces that are identified as Daedric Plate, and that is the chest piece and a helmet. But for the sake of matching sets, it does match with the rest of the Daedric armor, and the quest rewards you with a full heavy set of enchanted armor anyway. I hope that makes sense. The Daedric Plate is craftable without the quest, provided you have the Daedric Smithing perk, that is with leather strips, ebony ingots, and Daedra hearts. But like I said, the armor that's rewarded is also enchanted. So extra incentive to do the quest alongside, which happens to start in White Run within the Dragon's Reach dungeon. As mentioned before, this is the entrance to Dragon's Reach on the right side of the building. So if you go down inside the Dragon's Reach dungeon where the cells are located, there will be a table somewhat straight ahead with a little book labeled Death of a Crimson Dirk, alongside a copy of the Crimson Dirk's Volume 3. But after reading Death of a Crimson Dirk, the quest Beyond the Grave will begin. And this first objective will take you to the Falkreath Graveyard, which is just to your left if you enter from the West Gate. There will be a dead Khajiit here next to an empty coffin with a note on their body. Read the note on the body, as well as the note in the coffin if you want. And this will point you to Knife Point Ridge, where the armor you're looking for is. And Knife Point Ridge is somewhat in the mountains northwest west of Falkreath. When you make it there, you'll encounter your standard bandits as well as a bounty hunter fully clad in Daedric armor. After the bounty hunter's defeat, you'll find a note explaining why this person has this armor in the first place, as well as the armor itself that you can then take for your own. Like I said at the start of this entry, this one is a bit strange because Daedric plate only consists of two pieces, as well as two pieces of standard Daedric armor. But since it's all heavy, it should count towards matching set bonuses, I hope. So let's go over the enchantments. Starting with the Daedric plate pieces, the armor has a 20% illusion spell cost reduction, and the helmet gives a bonus of 50 health. As for the standard Daedric pieces, the boots provide muffle, while the gauntlets provide a bonus to alchemy, with a 20% bonus for more powerful potion making. As you can tell, the enchantments as well as the armor itself is a bit all over the place, but this is alternative armor with a bit more color when it comes to a heavy Daedric set. Now to get into the dragon alternative armors, and we start with the four-piece set of studded dragon scale light armor. Again, like everything mentioned previously, the differences in base armor are negligible at best. And to craft your own set of studded dragon scale armor, you'll need to have the quest Tilted Scales completed as well as Dragon Smithing unlocked in the perk tree. After having what you need perk and quest wise, it requires leather strips, leather, dragon scales, and iron ingots to craft. And even though this doesn't come enchanted from the quest, you still do need to get the quest completed to craft it yourself and, well, have a free set too after the quest. So to start Tilted Scales, you'll need to head to Candle Hearth Hall in Windhelm. You don't need to talk to anyone this time, and straight ahead in Candle Hearth Hall is a short hallway that leads to the rooms if you're staying there. On the right side of this hallway will be a table with a copy of the Crimson Dirks Volume 4. Activating this as if you were reading it and then putting it back down will activate the quest, and it will send you into the mountains a little ways northwest of Windhelm to Yorgrim's Overlook. This is an external location rather than a full-on dungeon. After arriving at Yorgrim's Overlook, to discover some skeletal remains and a chest locked behind a metal gate, you'll be attacked by skeletons, one of which is named Ulfnir Boneskin. After putting Ulfnir's bones to rest, you can pick up the overlook key from his remains, unlock the gate, access the chest, and the full set of studded dragon scale light armor will be inside. I've also heard tell that you can just show up here in Yorgrim's Overlook and get the armor too, without prompting the quest from Candle Hearth Hall. At any rate, that's how you get yourself a full set of studded dragon scale armor to enchant however you please. The pinnacle of dragon armor, at least in the heavy category, is insulated dragon plate, a four piece set of heavy dragon bone armor, the quest granting an enchanted set of heavy armor, as well as a couple other goodies. This is the one where the quest is definitely worth it. However, dragonsmithing perks unlocked, you can craft your dragon insulated plate without needing to complete the related quest. And for crafting insulated dragon plate armor, you'll need leather strips, dragon scales, and dragon bones. But the enchantments that come with the quest reward armor are really good, so let's get into that part. This is another innkeeper oriented quest and doesn't seem to have a level requirement at all. So all you need to do is 
find an innkeeper of your choice and keep picking bounty and rumor dialogue until you get a new dialogue choice that says any bounty work I can help with. The innkeeper should then hand you the bounty for Crow's Tooth and start the quest Bones for a Crow. Read the bounty and you'll be sent to Crow's Tooth's camp, which is in the mountains on the south side of the rift. The quest will also lead you through Darklight Tower, which has its own quest, but this is primarily the way to just get up to that elevation. However you choose to get there, just west of Darklight Tower will be Crow's Tooth's camp. This camp includes a diverse cast of enemies, including a hag raven named Linnell. Defeating her and looting her corpse, you'll get another note. This one sending you to Arkwind Point, another location in the mountains further west. Now Arkwind Point is a place with challenging Draugr most times, and the wide, winding path that goes through the ruins will cause you to run into at least a couple of high-level Draugr. But not the only challenges here, because as soon as you start moving towards the Tower Ruins, Crow's Tooth and the remains of her crew will attack you. Killing and looting Crow's Tooth as well as Alvasor the Rat should result in some nice enchanted gear to take from their pockets. Crow's Tooth having a Forsworn Axe by the name of Tyrant's Bane, which has a fire damage enchantment, and Alvasor the Rat should have two things on him, the Dismal Visage, a Falmer heavy armor helmet that has 25% cost reductions to conjuration and alteration spells, along with a Falmer war axe named Namira's Itch that is enchanted with stamina absorption. Some nice loot and not even what we're here for. Once you climb up to the top of the ruined tower, you'll find the corpse of Bjormund Windstrider, off of whom you can get his diary, as well as the full set of enchanted insulated dragon plate armor. The chess piece is also technically a unique called the Dragonbone Mail, which grants 100% fire resistance to its wearer. The boots offer plus 40 carrying capacity, the gauntlets plus 30% two-handed attack damage, and the helmet plus 50 health. So despite being a bit of a gauntlet over the other quests for alternative armors, Bones for a Crow ensured that the end loot was worth it. There is one more alternative armor to go over, and that is the Stallrim Fur Heavy Armor four-piece set. Out of the requirements of the rest of the armors here, this one requires pretty much everything, all of the above. You've got to start the Dragonborn DLC, you've got to have Ebony Smithing, you have to help out Skull Village in Solstheim, you have to unlock Stalrum Smithing from their side quest, and do the quest related to alternative armors Stalrum Fur. The nice part is though, you can get your set of Stalrum Fur armor just by doing the alternative armor quest, so you don't even have to bother to unlock all the Stalrum stuff when it comes to Smithing and the Skull Village stuff. You merely have to find this alternative armor quest. If you are going the crafting route, this will require leather strips, stall rim, and quicksilver ingots to craft. And like all the alternatives previously mentioned, the stall rim fur carries a bonus of about two base armor compared to the regular heavy stall rim armor. But enough with the extra details, let's just go get a set of it. In Solstheim, southwest of Skull Village, there's a small unmarked campsite right near the frozen pond in that area. And upon the barrel in said campsite is Skiol's journal. After reading and closing the journal, you'll start Ancient Ice. And this takes you way to the northwest of Solstheim in a small iceberg where you'll find Skiol the Tongueless and be forced to kill him thanks to him being aggressive. After that, in the sarcophagus he was standing next to will be the full four-piece set of Stalrim Fur Heavy Armor. And this set does not come enchanted, but if you've made it to Solstheim and helped Skull Village and all that stuff, you're probably at a point where you can enchant it with some decent enchantments, I hope. Oh, and Stallrim Fur, as well as everything else prior when it comes to survival mode, has been equivalent when it comes to warmth value as well. And so that's nice. That's nice that that was included. So, out of all 15 of these alternative armors, which one do you find yourself wearing the most? Which do you think looks the most awesome? And what kind of character are you playing with said awesome alternative armor? Please share in the comments. If you found this entertaining, useful, or a little bit of both, please do whatever you see fit to show that. Among the things you can do is showing your support through Patreon, like the amazing people on screen now including Wasteland Legend Sven. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander Tamriel like you own it.